for those of you who are just hearing this uh who for those of you who are just joining me my name is Gaius Chibuze aka Bitcoin Chief I'm an early Bitcoin investor I got involved in Bitcoin since 2011 and I've been leading the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency space of Africa for the past six seven eight years as a crypto educator so I launched my company called Tat Space, formerly called Abit Network, in, 2000 and, in 2019. And um, since then, I've been helping over 1 million persons understand cryptocurrencies, how it works, and everything. I, current, I currently reside in Miami, where, where I'm streaming live from. So, in case you're watching where, in, in case you're wondering where you're, where I am streaming this from. I'm in Miami right now. So today, last last week, we talked about how people could earn crypto for free as affiliates. And uh, while in that live, someone was asking questions about NFTs. And I said, please share this video. Share this video. If you're on Twitter, if you're on Instagram, share it, share it. If you're also watching on YouTube, I need more persons to share this video. I like when we get more persons to view these videos because it helps to achieve the aim, which is helping more persons to understand cryptocurrencies, NFTs, and the blockchain. So last week, I talked about how you can earn crypto for free. Uh, as an affiliate, I talked about the tatn.com brand. You can check it out. So someone was asking questions about NFTs. And today I decided that I'm going to do a video to talk about NFT. So since uh, 2021, there's been so much hype, especially this year about NFT. Before the crypto market went down, there's been so much of buzz about what is an NFT. So NFT actually stands for non-fungible tokens. So NFT is also a blockchain product. NFT is... NFT is also built on the blockchain, but NFT is not a cryptocurrency. Now, one of the key qualities of NFT is that it is non-fungible, which means that you can't exchange one NFT for another just the way cryptocurrencies are exchanged. You know, I can use uh, I can use one cryptocurrency to exchange for another, but you can't do that with an NFT. So there are so many NFTs out there, like we have uh, the Bot Ape NFTs, um, Yankees NFT, and a couple of other NFTs. Most of the NFTs I'm going to be mentioning are the NFTs I'm holding. So pardon me in case I'm not mentioning the one that you're holding. I like promoting things I'm invested in. So we have lots of NFTs out there, but what really makes this NFT unique is that Every NFT is one of one. Every NFT is one of one. When I mean that it is one of one, it means that there are no two identical NFTs. NFTs are coded with like uh, a unique number that, which means that even though there is a collection of 10,000 NFTs, each one of them is very, very unique. So NFT is similar to cryptocurrencies, but the only thing here is that they are non-fungible. So, and what this means is that each one of them is unique. Like we have 21 million Bitcoin, but all that 21 million Bitcoin is the same. All the 21 million Bitcoin that we are ever going to have, they are the same Bitcoin. But for NFTs, there might be a collection of 10,000, 1 million, or as even just 100 NFTs, but out of that collection, none, none, of, none of that NFT is the same. Okay, can you guys, I think people are saying something. Yeah. Please use the, yeah, just type if you want to ask any question. I'm going to look at that later. So there are different, now on my main page, I think I lost you guys. So there are different, different kind of NFTs, but one thing that is very unique about NFT 
is that each one of them is different from the other. So for a, lay, for a layman listening to me, one of the ways to understand what an NFT is, is think of an NFT like an event ticket. Think of an NFT like an event, like an event ticket, which let's say there is going to be uh, there, is, there is going to be a party event right now, and the organizers of this event say this event is strictly for people who are holding these party dance NFTs. So that ticket that you usually buy to go to an event, that could be also that could also be turned into an NFT, which means that as you're going for this, everyone holding this party dance nft when you get to the gates of that event because you're holding that nft it means that you are eligible to come for this nft so nfts can be can be said to be like a unique ticket that gives you access to a particular club association particular physical products particular art so some people also create nfts of art so someone could draw like a very beautiful art and also take a picture of it, convert it to an NFT. So this means that if you, if you own this NFT, you can also own this real art in real life. I don't know if you guys understand me. So think of this NFT like something that gives you ownership of either a physical item or a digital item. There are some games also that have their own NFTs. So if you play, if you played this game called, um, if you played, uh, is it Fortnite or one of one of these games that are popular? If you play that game, you will see that there are di different different digital items that, if you if you win in that game, let's say you get to a certain level in that game, you can mint that your level and put it as an NFT and sell to some other player and that person instead of that person coming to start to play this game from from where you started the person is going to start from where you stop so i'm just trying to make you understand how you can how you, how you can understand this nft as something that gives you access to either a physical product either a physical art or a digital art so you can draw if, if you're watching this from Nigeria, now you probably saw the picture of the guy who took... You saw on Instagram the story of... You read on Instagram or Twitter the story of the guy who took the picture of one old man and minted it as an NFT. And because people were emotionally connected to that NFT and the story of the man, an old man smiling, people, someone bought that NFT up to a million naira. Now, whatever the person that is going, to, what, whatever the person that bought that NFT is going to do with it, is none of our business. Our only business there is that someone saw the value, someone saw the value of this NFT because it's a smiling old man, and the person placed the value on it, and the person bought it. Another guy called uh, Beeple sold an NFT for sixty-nine million US dollars. I know definitely some of you definitely have not heard this but someone sold an nft for 69 million dollars so there is there is there's is an artist that has been painting the story of his life every day and he matched all of them for three i think for i think i don't know if it was for for one year or for years and he matched all the story corrections as one artwork and he sold it to an indian guy maybe for 69 million us dollars so they are different, different kind of NFT. But what gives this NFT value? Two things gives the NFT value is it is the value the person that is buying this NFT puts on it, or the value that, or the, or the value that NFT gives access to. There is an event I was supposed to go to in New York, and that event was advertised, but it was only open to people who had. It was only open to people who, who were holding that NFT. So you see now, I could have, on a normal day, I could have opened my wallet, bring out my dollars and want to buy the ticket to that event. But the person said, if you don't have this NFT, you can't come to this event. 
So these are two ways an NFT has value. Either the value that a collector, just the way you go to the market, you go to the you 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 go to an art exhibition center and you buy a physical drawing of something. I've seen some of the the I've seen some weird art like this, and I asked the people, what exactly did you find beautiful in this thing that you bought it? What exactly, what exactly did you find beautiful in this thing? So it is the person who is buying it that truly sees that value behind this NFT. So some of these NFT are like drawings of monkeys, uh, 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 animals, drawings of humans drawings of different different kind of characters but what really gives it value is one the access that nft gives to you remember i just told you of the guy that advertised a very lovely event in new york i was supposed to go for that event i love everything they said they were they said was going to happen to that event but the whole thing the whole thing Stop my whole my whole interest stopped where they said to buy this this event is only open to people holding this NFT. So that is one way. What that NFT on what value can you unlock with that NFT? People people pay for people people buy tickets to, to Drake's event, David Doe's event, and a whole lot of other artists' events. So let's say I'm a big artist like Bonaboy or Whiskey or CK can come now and say he is selling out NFTs to his fans. And all his fans that are going to hold this, all his fans that are going to hold this ticket, if he's having a concert in Lagos, in New York, in Miami, wherever he's having a concert, if you're holding that NFT, you are allowed into that event. So that is one way an NFT has value. Then the second way is, the value that the person that is buying it places on it. Directly opposite me now is an art in my house, which is just a cake on the it's just a cake on the table. It's just a cake in a plate, a melting cake in a plate. On a very good day, if I walk into an art exhibition center and see this kind of art now, definitely I will not I will not be interested based on my interests. But the, the, the owner of this, my house, now saw it and felt this is a good art. And she bought it and placed it here. And now you can now see that somebody was paid for this art. So two things that gives NFT value is what it unlocks, what that NFT unlocks, like the one I talked about the event. And secondly, the value that the collector or the person that is getting it places on it placed on it that's why someone bought just an ordinary drawing for 69 million us dollars just like cryptocurrency nfts has to do with the utility so if they say something is valuable it either means what can i use this thing to do like right now, if I have Bitcoin now, I can go to some restaurants in this Miami now and eat and pay with Bitcoin. If I have Bitcoin now, if someone calls me from any part of the world and say, I please, I need a hundred dollars. All I can just say is, do you have a Bitcoin wallet? And I will transfer Bitcoin to this person. So just the way cryptocurrency relies on utility and trust. That is how NFTs also rely on utility and trust. For every NFT, NFT depends on something called community. For every NFT, there is a community of believers. So these people who believe in these NFTs are the ones that buy it. I signed up, I followed someone on page here, an NFT influencer on my Twitter. And I see that this guy posts different, different NFTs almost every day. But guess what? I am not buying all the NFTs that he is advertising. But I'm sure for everyone that he advertises, there is someone that connects with the story behind each one. And that person is going to buy it. I've bought a couple of NFTs from this guy's page because I saw them on this influencer's page. But guess what? I am not buying everyone that he advertises. 
there was a day that he advertised an nft where if you have that nft it's like a drink nft if you have that nft if you are in america or the uk anywhere there's a particular drink that anywhere you have that nft you can go to walk into that place and go drink and go get that drink if you have that nft it gives you access to get that drink coca-cola can also come now and say okay we are creating an nft if you hold If you hold the Coca-Cola NFTs, you can walk into any shop and present this NFT and they will give you a bottle of Coke anywhere in the world. So that is how NFTs, that is how as a creator, you can put value behind your NFT. So how do you spot good or NFTs with real utility? Because if there is no utility, that NFT is useless. If that NFT doesn't give you access to something, you don't place value on it. That's why I always advise people that NFT is different from cryptocurrencies. And you don't buy NFT with a mindset that you're buying cryptocurrencies. You buy NFTs because you believe in that particular course or idea or story behind that NFTs. I bought one of my NFTs here in Miami at, after attending an event. Why? Because the guy said they were going to be organizing business events strictly for people holding these NFTs. I'm a businessman. I want to network. I want to meet new people, share my ideas with them, get investors for my company, get investors. I want to meet people. I want to also do business with people. So... When I saw the value behind this NFT that, okay, it's going, to, it's going to give me access to this event. Whenever these guys are organizing this event, there's going to be a boat cruise. In fact, even, even one of, in, in one of their use cases, they said they are going to have a, co a conference that they are going to bring one of my mentors, which is Grand Cardon. So... I have, a, I have an emotional connection to the Grand Cardone brand. So what happens? Immediately I heard that, I said, I'm getting this NFT. So you see, so this is why you don't have to just buy every NFT. You can buy every cryptocurrency out there and get lucky. And it pumps and you sell it. But NFT doesn't work like that. There must be, a, there must be an emotional connection to the story behind it. Or there must be a reason why you are buying that NFT. Like the bot app NFTs, they have different, different billionaire yash parties, events, and the rest of it. So everybody buying this NFT is buying this NFT. Why? Because they want to meet other billionaires, or because they are not they are they are millionaires and they want to meet billionaires, or they are thousandaires and they want to meet millionaires. So that is how you spot NFTs with good utility. So for, before you buy an NFT, look at the story behind this NFT. What value does this NFT unlock me to? What value can I unlock with this NFT? So you don't just buy the NFTs because Gaius Chibweze is promoting it. You don't just buy it because the CEO of whatever it is is promoting it. So you buy these NFTs because you feel that whatever this NFT is going to unlock is going to be of value to you. I live here in Miami and I go to I go to events. Most of the events are paid events. So if I go to one event and I love what I saw there, I love all the speakers and everyone. If that kind of event, if they create an NFT and they tell me that, okay, bro, if you have this NFT, the next editions of this event, you don't have to buy a ticket to come. Everyone holding this event can come into can come in for that event for free. What is going to happen? Because I enjoyed that event, I am going to buy that NFT. So that is how you spot good NFTs based on the story behind it. A friend of mine who was uh, who was who was sexually abused and. She had this trauma and the rest of it, and she created an NFT for people who were, who were also sexually abused. 
Now, what does, what does this NFT do? Now, this NFT is going to build like a community of women who have been sexually abused one time or the other. It's going to build a support community for those kind of women to help them regain their, their, their self-esteem. Some persons who are sexually abused, whether male or females, they lost their self-esteem. They don't want to mix with other people. They don't want to talk to other people. So what is going to happen now? Everyone that was sexually abused or that has someone that has been sexually abused and is looking for a community to network, to share their story, encourage themselves, etc., will now buy that NFT. The reason why that person is going to buy that NFT is why is because the person connects with the story of this NFT. So they are going to give themselves support. In fact, she even went ahead and told me that she's going to build this NFT in such a way that they are going to have conferences against, uh, against sexual abuse. So you see now, if let's say I was abused when I was young and I have a problem, which I acknowledge I have this problem now. If I see that kind of NFT and that kind of community, so it's not even about it's not even about the assets. The NFT is just the assets. The value is what it unlocks you to, what you do with it, what can you enjoy with it. A friend called me yesterday from the UK. He's building, he's building a restaurant that people who have this NFT can just walk into that restaurant and eat. So someone like me that likes food now, that, that I travel around the world, now I can buy that kind of NFTs. And any country I go where he has his restaurant, I can go there and I can go there and eat food. Someone is asking me, can you resell an NFT you bought? Definitely, I'm going to come back to this question. Please, I'm going to, I just want to go through the key topics I noted down there. One of the right approach to NFT is, are you emotionally connected to this NFT? This girl that created this NFT for people that were sexually abused. In fact, let me even, oh, I don't want to minimize this now. I wanted to just give you the name of this NFT so that if you were sexually abused and you're looking for a community to join, you can actually buy her NFT and join her community. So, this girl now that has been sexually abused and she has created this safe space for people. Not so many, some people who were raped, they can't come out and tell their parents that they were raped. So most persons who have been sexually abused, they are dying inside with that guilt, that, that fear. But they can't come out. But when they have this kind of community where they know that they are not going to judge them, Someone is not going to say, oh, you were not properly dressed. That was why you were raped. When they see this kind of community, what will happen? They will buy this NFT just to belong to this community. So this is the right, this is the right approach. This is the right way to approach an NFT. Are you emotionally connected to the story behind these NFTs? Are you emotionally, someone bought, bought ape because that person has big eye for where billionaires are gathered and the person wants to always be able to attend. People, people go to networking events and they meet people, they make money, they do a whole lot of things. So someone is emotionally connected. Somebody like me, those are the kind of NFTs I'm going to definitely buy. One of, one of my favorite rappers, let's say you are... I'm sure you guys know Ye. Let's say Ye is launching an NFT. Now, if Kanye West is launching an NFT, I am definitely going to buy that NFT. Let's say there's an NFT that Kanye West is creating that will give me access to attend all his Donda events. Or even say, if you hold this NFT, even if it's $1 million, you can have dinner with Kanye West. Because of the way I love him, I'm going to buy that NFT. So you must make sure that you are emotionally connected to that NFT, that if it's something because most times people or less people who are hungry, you understand? Or less people who are hungry, most times people don't buy NFT, people who need more or less, I don't, I don't really want to call it hungry, but 
most people buy NFTs because of the cost, not because of resale. They buy this NFT, why? Because they will enjoy this community behind that NFT. I have a friend, Donnell, you can check him out on Instagram. He is one of the biggest tax... Uh, uh, he, he, he helps you work on your tax, cred, tax and credit here in America. He has a company called Jumping Tax. You can check them out. What did he do? He created an NFT called Kangaroos NFTs. Now, if you are a holder of that Kangaroos NFT, you don't need to pay for his services for tax repairs. In fact, he just did an event in New York. Over 300 persons attended. Everyone, were, everyone was a member of his community, people who are part of that Kangaroos NFTs. I think the NFT is Kangaroo Heroes, Kangaroo Heroes, whatever, I don't know. Kangaroos, Kangaroo Heroes. Yeah, you can, you can check out that, that NFT. Because I know that I need to file my tax here in the United States and everything, I bought into that NFT. So, as long as I am here in the United States now, as long as I'm paying tax, I am not going to have to worry again about paying somebody to work on my tax report and every other thing. I know that I belong to this community. They have me on their system as a holder of their NFT. Every time that I need to file my tax and I need assistance with that, they are going to handle it for me. So will I want to sell that kind of NFT? I don't think. So most of the NFTs are not bought because they want, because people want to resell them. Fine, people buy NFTs. I'm going to also talk about what makes the value of an NFT go high. This uh, board ape that we are talking about, I think was launched sometime in 2017 or thereabout. And they, they even gave itself for free. It's among the most popular NFTs and the first. So people buy these NFTs because of the access. I can hear you, boss. Thank you so much, Tan. So, which means everybody can hear me. Bro, check your mic. Check your mic. So, somebody bought, people buy into NFTs. Why? Because of the stories and the assets these NFTs is going to give to them. People don't just buy into NFTs because they want to go resell them. There are some people who are collectors that, are, that just love the art. So, someone was asking, someone was asking, and the person said, this, uh, the person was asking and the person said, these people, the person said, the man who bought uh, the NFT for 69 million, what is he going to do with it? Now, now the truth is, some people buy an NFT because of that same reason people buy art. I, I'm telling you of a particular art straight opposite me, just, just opposite me here as I'm talking to you now. This art is just cake that is melting, and there's a spoon, cake in a plate, and that cake is and that cake is melting, and there is a plate. So let's say this art is just one person that has it. Let's say this art was just ten when it was created. Now, the people who have this art now place value on it. So that is one way people buy these NFTs because. Number one, it can be because this NFT is rare. Number two, it can be because of the cost behind that NFT, the story, the community. What can I do with this NFT? Someone wants to launch an NFT now. My friend, he called me yesterday from the UK. He wants to launch a digital restaurant where you can eat food from any part of the world once you have that NFT. So imagine... I spend over a hundred dollars a week just to eat real food in my mouth in the US here. So imagine I have that NFT now and anytime I'm hungry now I can just I can just drive to that restaurant now and I go sit down and I eat food. So definitely I'm going to love that kind of NFT because I have a need for food. I bought one of the NFTs because the guy said they are going to be organizing similar events to the one I attended. 
So I love that event. I saw what they advertised. I went for that event. I bought ticket $200. And somebody's offering me an NFT of $100 to have lifetime access to this event. What is going to happen? Definitely, I have to take that offer. I bought that NFT immediately. Their next event is coming up. It's coming up on the 16th of June. What am I going to do? I'm going, I'm, I'm going to carry my NFT and drive there and go, and go attend that event. So that is how. So NFTs cannot be easily sold like cryptocurrency. If I have Bitcoin right now, and I'm tired of holding Bitcoin, I can go convert Bitcoin to Ethereum. I can go convert Ethereum to Dogecoin, Tatcoin, Litecoin, any kind of coin. But I can't do the same with NFT. So most times I get people come on my Instagram and they tell me, please, I have an NFT and I want to sell. And I will just be laughing at them. So you were not supposed to buy an NFT with the hope that, oh, I am going to sell it tomorrow. You were supposed to buy an NFT because of the access that NFT gives to you. I was having a meeting with my friend, Mr. Easy, the musician who, who most of you know. And we we're having this meeting in London. I think sometime last year, October. And we're having this meeting and we're discussing about how he plans to he plans to take all his catalogue of music. When we mean catalogue, we mean all the songs that he has released. He wants to put all of them all together and issue the rights, the streaming earnings and everything as an NFT and sell it to his fans. So which means if you're holding Mr. Easy NFTs, if Mr. Easy makes $10,000 from Spotify every month, when he collects that $10,000 from Spotify, he, that instead of that money coming to him because he has sold it, sold that right as an NFT, that streaming money is going to go to all the fans that are holding that NFT. So this is one way an artist can make money from NFT. So one of those artists like Snoop Dogg, Nas, and the rest of them, some of them have made so much money by issuing NFT. So as an artist, one of the ways you can raise money for your music, music is very, 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 very expensive. Music is an expensive investment. I own a record label, so I know. My artist Rebel, she's about to drop the remix of her, her song Mini Scared Wuruga. And yesterday, my manager, the manager of my record label, Emeka, called me and, and I was asking Emeka, what is the budget for this release? And he was telling me that we, we were going to spend up to 29 million naira for just this release that we are going to release. Already, we already paid. TG Omori, which many of many of you know that shoot video. We already paid him six million naira to shoot a video. That is part of the budget gone. We have to pay different different TV channels. We have to pay YouTube for for advert, Facebook ad, Instagram ad. We have to pay radio stations to play. So I am running a record label because I'm an investor and I have this money. But as an upcoming artist right now, you don't have access. If you don't have access to this kind of fund, what can you do to raise this money now? One of the things that you can do to raise this money is if you have a group of people that believe in you as an artist. Sorry, let me sip some. So if you have a group of people that believe in you as an artist, you can put all of them all together and share your manifesto or whatever it is, share your vision with them and say, guys, I want to thank you guys so much for believing in me. I see how you guys have been listening to my old songs, sharing it and the rest, but it is time to take this music thing to the next level. Please, I am looking to raise $100,000. I'm looking to raise 1 million naira for my next project. Out of that one million naira or one hundred thousand dollars, I am going to pay video director. I am going to pay different, 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 different. I'm going to pay radio. I'm going to pay TV. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. So I can now say 
if I'm the artist now, my fans now, they will listen to me all. They will say, okay, this so so flow, our Bitcoin chief. We love this Bitcoin chief. We love what? We love his music. Let's give him a chance. So instead of going to stress yourself as an artist looking for a lawyer to write whatever now, you can now say, so what I am going to give you guys to hold is an NFT as a collateral. I am going to write it on a smart contract that I collected $100,000 from you guys. $100,000 divided by 100 of you that are in this group, which means each of you gave me $100. $100. So I'm going to give each of you an NFT worth now $100. Once you hold this NFT, you can attend my shows if tomorrow I blow big. Even if I don't blow, if I'm organizing a concert in Lagos, if I'm organizing a concert in Miami, in New York, you, if you're holding this NFT because you believe in me early and you invested in me, you can come to this event for free. If Spotify is paying me, if I put this song out there with this money you guys have given me, and this song blow up, people are now doing videos on TikTok, Spotify, Apple Music, the song is now like a national anthem, the way Whiskey Essence is now. Any money I am ending from Spotify, Apple Music, and the rest of them for streaming, if I'm earning, let's say, $5,000 a month, 50% of this money goes to you guys who believed in me and invested in me. And I'm going to sign it on this smart contract now. There is... There is there is, there, is, there is a distribution comp company called Tsunko. I think those ones, they use smart contract. So these people can now say, okay, we are fine. Create the NFT. We believe in you, Bitcoin chief. We are going to give you this $100,000. We want Bitcoin chief to glow. So they are going to say, okay, create this smart contract. We are going to give you this $100,000. So I will create an NFT called Bitcoin Chief NFTs. And I will just create just 100 as they are. I will now give that NFTs to them. I will create a place where they can go use their Bitcoin, USDT, Ethereum, or whatever, even their credit card. And they pay me for that NFT. Each of them pay me $100, $100. So I will take that their money now that they have given me now. I will go call Boy Director, which is TJ Omori. I will tell T.J. Mori how much is your video shoot. I have recorded this song. I believe this song is a banger. How much is it? He say I charge $20,000 to shoot video. I take $20,000 from that money. I pay T.J. Mori. I go to Sound City. I go to Hip TV. I go to all the radio houses. And I now give them this money. If this song comes out, God helps me. This song becomes a hit like, let's say, Whiskey Essence or Drake, uh, God's plan, becomes a worldwide anthem, a hit. Guess what is going to happen? The value of that, my NFT, that I give to these people is going to go up. Why? Because I have now become a big artist like Whiskey. My song is popular now, playing everywhere. CK, CK that you know, had similar story but he didn't create an nft but i'm just telling you how one song can change somebody's life i have traveled four countries okay i traveled to no no, no. i traveled four countries last year no i think six because i went to burundi i traveled six countries last year i've traveled a total of 26 countries but i traveled to six new countries last year in each of these countries in each of these countries I went to, although some of them were, were like either Europe or Africa, somebody was playing Love Wanting Thing by CK. Either a club, either a bar, somebody must, was playing that song. So if the song becomes blown like that song, now what happens? That NFT automatically gets value. Why? Because the people that are holding it are now knowing that, okay, is CK now is having an event they can come with that their nft and even though if they don't want to use that nft to come now guess what now there is a somewhere called the secondary market which is open c you can check it open c open c dot io whatever so on this open c now you can 
go sell your NFT to somebody else that believes in the same cause. You can list it there and someone can make you an offer. So we were the guys that believe in CK. We were the guys that believe in CK when he was not as big as he is now. Now CK has become big now. He gave us this NFT for hundred dollars. And now, because he's big now, his song is everywhere now. He has now sung with some big American artists. Everything is going well now. I can list that NFT that he gave me for hundred dollars. I can now list that NFT for one million dollars. So, if another CK fan right now who just got to know, know CK right now is crazy. Oh, CK is the best artist. They are fighting between CK, Davido, and Bonaboy. Who is the best? He's Daniel. If another crazy fan comes now, the person will say, how much is this CK, this thing? Because he also loves CK. And he wants to meet CK. He wants to dine with CK. He will see, he will, he will go to that secondary market, which is OpenSea, see all the benefit of holding that NFTs. And he will not do what? He will be ready to pay me $1 million for that NFT so that I will transfer all that benefit behind that NFTs to him. So this Instagram live I'm doing, this live I'm doing is sponsored by uh, Groove Up. You can check out GrooveUp.com. It's a music streaming platform that does this kind of service I just explained now for upcoming artists. It's currently being built. It's a company I'm invested in. When this company is ready, upcoming artists that want to raise money from their fans can come to this platform and issue NFTs and raise money from their fans. So that's why they are sponsoring this life I am doing. As you know, definitely I don't talk for free. So that is how you attach you to you profit from NFT as a beginner. So first of all, when an when an NFT launches, when an NFT launches, people go through a process called whitelist. People who are the first believers of that project register their wallet or their email, whatever, to show interest. They join the Discord because NFTs work with communities. If you listen to everything I have been saying here, I've been talking about how group of people who believe in the same cause. If I am a politician now, I can create a Donald Trump NFTs. And guess what? Because NFT is something like a court, like a club. I don't want to use the name court because most of you hear no court negatively, but. If NFT is like people who believe in the same idea, the same cause, as I am here and I have people who love me. And if I, if I land today in Dubai and I say, I want everybody that loves me, Bitcoin chief, to gather today at uh, Palm Jumeirah, for instance, or Burj Khalifa, people are going to come out. Why? Because those people, because they believe in me. So those, those, those people are going to come out. Why? Because they believe in me. So these people who are collectors of this NFT believe in that cause. They believe in that idea. So they show interest very early. So when this NFT goes live, those people buy it first. So as the creator of that NFT now, I can put... I can create something called a white paper or whatever. And this is like my manifesto. This is just like a politician that wants to get vote from people. You see, the, the, the politician first, get, first makes a promise. People believe, give him their vote, and then watch out for the next four years if he's going to do what he said he's going to do. So as, a, as an NFT creator, you need to draft a white paper. Have like a website where people can come read about your NFT have like a manifesto or a vision statement or a white paper, whatever it is, where people can see what you want to do. Right now, I am working on creating my own NFT called Yankees. What is my promise? I currently run an academy 
or a clique cult, whatever I want to call it, brotherhood, whatever you want to call it. I don't know how you want to understand it. Where I teach people about crypto, I show them which coin to buy before it launch. I help people make money quick with crypto and the safe way, and I help reduce their risk. I call it my inner circle. People pay me $500 each to join my inner circle. Right now, from 18th of January to today, 468 people have paid me $500 to join this my inner circle. So I have class with them two times in a week. Wednesdays, 12 p.m. Miami time. Saturday, 12 p.m. Miami time. Every day when the market is good, I'm sitting down on this my desk now doing analysis, showing them which coin to buy, which coin to sell, and I am always working with them. These people pay me up to $500 for each one of them to join my inner circle. So I am now working to say, okay, fine. These people that they have trust me, 460 something people, I am going to reward them. So I'm going to create something called Yankees NFT, which is my own NFT, my personal brand NFTs. I'm going to give them these NFTs. In most of these countries, when I when I when I go to this most of these countries, I use I use a security in those countries. So you can't just like right now you cannot just see me in Ghana and you just walk up to me. My security man is going to tell you sorry, unless I said leave the person. So you can't just meet me because you know me. Sorry. So I am and I'm going to and I have said that if you're holding this NFT and you are in that country, when I land in that country, we are going to organize like a gate together where you can come meet with me. Most of you here, you have met me in Dubai, UK, America, and some other of these places. You've met me in Ghana and other places. So now, this my NFT gives you access to meeting with me when I'm in Dubai, when I'm in the UK, when I'm in Miami here, I can say, okay, you saw the event I did here in Miami where I had over 112 persons, both white, black, pink, whatever color of people attend. Why did these people attend this event? They attend this event, why? Because I am a respected, reputable crypto influencer. They believe in me and they trust me. So I am creating this NFT now that you can only have access to me when you have this NFT. If you're holding this NFT, sometimes you can call me and discuss your issues with me. Oh, and tell me, oh, I'm having this problem trading. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. So this is why people create NFTs. So you can create NFT as a personal brand. You can create NFT as a company. You can create NFT as an artist. You can even create NFT as an author. So let's say I have written a book called Daddy, Why Are We Poor? And I want to form something like a reader's book club where we are going to be meeting every weekend, maybe online, Facebook room or wherever. And we are going to be analyzing that book and discussing it. I can create an NFT and say, Daddy, why are we poor NFTs? So if you're holding this NFT, you will join this discussion room. So why does NFT matter? The reason why I'm taking this time now to do this Groove of Sponsored Life that I am doing right now is because Instagram is integrating NFTs any of these days. Mark Zuckerberg went live and said it, and they posted it on their page. So which means that this my Yankees NFT I'm thinking of creating right now, people can buy this NFT on my Instagram. People can just come to my Instagram and they go through my timeline and they see my NFT and they can buy it. And when they click on my NFT, they will see the benefit. As I'm sitting down here now, so many people's dream is just to meet with me one on one and have a chat, discuss with me. So many, so many people's big goal is to have a handshake with me, have a hug, or learn from me. So I can list all these things there as benefits of you holding this NFT. Guess what? If 460 something people have paid to join my inner circle this year alone, so which means 1 million people that are yet to know me, when they get to know me, they will want to buy my NFTs. 
So holders of this my NFT now can decide to say, okay, I can now say, I don't want to accept Naira, uh, USD, dirhams, or any other currency again. I just want only people that are holding my NFT. So my NFT is now on a is now on OpenSea, which is the secondary market. They have other market like Rarity and the rest of it. But as every day I have in a week at least I have ten people join my inner circle. So in this week now, these people we have to go buy these NFTs from those who bought it before. So this is how people go buy NFT. So you that believed in me now that I am talking about this now, and when I launch this NFT and I say this NFT price starts from $500 and you believe in it, you say, ah, this Bitcoin chief is popular. He's the number one crypto or the first African to invest in Bitcoin. He's big. Bitcoin chief is a big brand. I believe in him. I want to buy this NFT. Now you can buy this NFT. To have access to me buy it because you want to have access to me and the services i offer then behind that now you can also still have it in your mind and say okay if i if i if i have access to this bitcoin chief and i learn everything from him and i ever get tired with this nft i can sell it in the secondary market which is open sea so this is how people make money from nfts when this bot app but it launched in 2017. It was the same promises. It was the same promises that they made. But guess what? Most people didn't really see it blowing up big. I think they, they even gave some for free. They will tell you, join our Discord, follow our Telegram. We will give you one of these NFTs. Each one of these each one of these NFTs right now is worth over 300 and something thousand dollars. Something that was given to people for free. Follow this page, do this, do that. Or something that some people bought for hundred dollars. So NFTs have, they, 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 they get value as the time progresses, over the time. So NFT is not something you are going to go buy because you are a gambler. You want to flip one dollar to two dollars. You buy NFT for the first reason because you are connected to the cause. Most of the NFTs I am holding right now, I am emotionally connected to the cause. I love NFTs of music. When Snoop Dogg went live with his NFTs, I bought. Nas, the same thing. Most of the American artists I love, I buy their NFTs. When uh, these guys... Uh, 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 I love if you if you if you followed me, you know I love Lamborghinis. I love Lamborghinis so much. So I want there is an NFT I bought where any city you travel to, uh, Dubai, New York, uh, London, you can drive a Lamborghini. You can just go show that NFT and drive a Lamborghini. I bought that NFT. So. I am buying these NFTs because I'm emotionally connected to the idea behind it, the use case behind it. So I am not buying this NFT because I want to flip $1 to $2. It can happen and it's going to happen. So one of the things that you need to be to know before you buy NFTs is that you don't easily sell NFTs the way you sell cryptocurrencies. If I have Bitcoin right now or Tazcoin or whatever cryptocurrency it is, I can move it to an exchange. There is a market order where somebody right now has placed a sell order in a day now that he wants to sell off his Tazcoin for one penny. The price is delaying. The person is angry. Or his Bitcoin, the price of Bitcoin has, has gone down to 29000 It has overstayed there. Somebody is angry right now and he wants to sell his Bitcoin. There is a market to always sell at market price for every crypto. But that is not the case for NFTs. You can't just get angry and go sell your NFT the way you're going to get angry and sell your Dogecoin, any other cryptocurrency. So somebody needs to also believe in that the same cost that you believed in to buy that NFT, to come buy that NFT from your hand. The person can decide to make you an offer. Either you bought that NFT hundred dollars, and the person can come and price that NFT fifty dollars. So, the bigger and active the community is, 
if I launch an NFT now and I say I have some, uh, what do they call this? I have some Spanish girls, hot Spanish and Latina girls, or beautiful black models. I can launch an NFT now and say, each time, each time you are in Miami, I have this, I have this group of girls. Once you are in Miami, if you're holding that NFT, I will send you one. There's an NFT like this. This thing I'm telling you now. I will send you one of those girls to come keep you company. Guess what? Many of you that are watching this, definitely you, you, you want to buy that NFT. Why would you want to buy that NFT? You already know why you want to buy that NFT. You understand me? So now there is a huge demand for that NFT because, man... As you are, let's say you are, you are a single guy, you're coming to this Miami now, definitely. You know, people, people, people come to Miami to spend money. And definitely, there's, 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 let's, let's not lie about this. There's no how, it's hard. I'm not saying people should be promiscuous, but there's no how you can enjoy money without a woman being in the picture. Somehow, somehow, anyhow you want to put it. So this NFT, so I'm just giving an example now. Let's say I create this high demand NFT or I create an NFT and I say, if you're holding this NFT every month, you're going to be collecting salary of $1,000. Please, I'm not, for, for religious people, I'm talking like a market. I'm not talking like a religious person. So that I, I use, I give that, that, I give that example because there are, there are three things that sells in life. Three things people are always interested. First time strangers are always interested. In this book called Cash, Cash Advertising by uh, Drew Eric, he said there are th three human three human wants that people, that there is always a market for at any time. Number one is that want of sex. Number two, the want of doubling one dollar to two dollars. Number three is that want of health security so if i launch an nft now where in in a niche where there is a hot demand for it guess what is going to happen if i launch that NFT, people are going to be buying that nft like chris and what is going to happen that nft's price is going to go up the nft price is going to go up so when you're buying an nft think about if you're buying it with the motive of reselling it Think about how many people are there like you. If I launch an NFT now for to teach you your textbook, whatever you were taught in school, and I said, I want to launch an NFT, which that NFT is going to make you know this thing that they taught you in school before that you have forgotten. Many of you here will not be interested in it. But because many of you here now are adults now, you have money problem. If I launch an NFT and make a promise behind this NFT and say, I am going to be giving you $100 every month for the next 10 years, as far as you're holding this NFT. Guess what is going to happen? Almost all of you here will be interested. If I launch another NFT, I say every month we will, we will, we will, we will send, if you're single, we will send one babe to come and keep you company. All of you here, definitely that are men, definitely you will definitely, almost all of you here are going to be interested, unless you don't like women, like me. So, so, I was just joking. So, what am I saying? Make sure that you're buying NFTs in your area of interest. You understand? Make sure that you're buying NFT in your area of interest. Why? Because you cannot sell your nft you cannot sell your nft the way you can sell your cryptocurrencies you understand you cannot sell your nft as easy as you can sell your cryptocurrency you understand me you cannot sell your nft easily the way you can sell your uh, your cryptocurrency you can hold a particular coin now somebody can say you know bitcoin has been down since last year it fell from $69,000 and it's been down. Right now, I have people who, who come to me and tell me that they are tired of holding Bitcoin. They want to sell it off. Guess what I will tell them? Move it to an exchange, click a button and sell it off. As far as you're selling it at market price or below market price, there is always liquidity to buy it. 
But guess what is going to happen? For an NFT, you can't do that. You are stuck with it. Until another person sees what you see to come buy it, you are stuck with it. So this is why you should only buy NFTs for things and courses that you believe in. Because they are not easily resold the way cryptocurrencies are resold. So I think I've, I've talked a whole lot. I need to take questions. So I'm going to be taking questions right now. I'll start first from my Facebook. So I'll start taking questions first on my Facebook. So um, ask me all the important questions that you have about NFTs. Ask me all the important questions that you have. This person is asking me, will Luna pump? When is that coin pumping? These are not all the questions I'm here to answer. I'm just here to talk about NFTs. So what is happening to Bitcoin? Please, that's not what I'm here for. Uh, watching from Brazil. Thanks so much. Now, let's keep sharing. We'll reach more people. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. Okay, this person is asking, what if there is no buyer for my NFT? So I just said it now. If you're buying an NFT, make sure that it is something that other people are interested in. So if there is no buyer for your NFT, you're stuck with it. Because somebody has to come, somebody has to come on purpose. And right now there are over 1 million NFTs already created on OpenSea. So which means even if I'm jobless, I can't start going from my laptop seeing all the NFT. Because if you see any fine NFT you like, you have to click to read what it is about. People are creating NFTs for different, different reasons. People are creating NFTs for prostitution, NFTs for drugs, NFTs for social business club, NFTs for health and fitness, NFTs for different, different kinds. So I can't go and read about all of these NFTs. So I must have a particular NFT that is taking me to a particular reason for the NFT that is taking me to go to OpenSea. So someone cannot just jam your NFT for sale by accident. Person must go and say, okay, Yankees NFT, and it will bring up all the people, all the people that are holding Yankees. So this is one thing that you have to know that it is not easy to sell off an NFT the way you sell cryptocurrencies. Somebody else has another question. Keep up the good work. Thanks so much. Wonderful boss watching from an umbrella. God bless, God bless, God bless, God bless. So please ask me all your questions. I need that guy that bought that 365 days picture college for 69 million. What do you think you will benefit from it? Perfect. Wills are their job. So the guy that bought the picture for 16 for, for 69 million dollars. Now, what do people benefit from Mona Lisa pictures? The Mona Lisa uh, drawing that sold for for hundreds of millions. That has resold and resold and resold. What do people profit from it? If I am a holder of Mona Lisa now, that 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 fulfillment I have because there is only one Mona Lisa drawing and only me have it. Some people have that fulfillment. So that is what that that guy is going to do with that picture. So that guy right now he has been in the news. He has been invited to to speak at different events. He, the people have done stories about him. So, only the exposure he got from this NFT alone, the exposure he got from buying this NFT alone, he must have even, if he wants to start charging for, charge $100,000 to make appearances, for you to write about him, he must have even made back his money. Because he has been in the news. On a very good day now, I wouldn't be talking about him if he didn't buy that. See, now I'm telling you guys about him. So the exposure that he has had. And now people see that NFT like highly priced. So someone else that is as crazy as him can also offer him 70 million and buy it from him. So that is that that is it now. Now don't forget, there are risks also associated with NFTs. Most of you know Mark, the guy who created uh was his, yeah, it's Mark his name, but yeah, I think the guy who created Twitter. So his first tweet that he posted on Twitter, he sold it as an NFT to a guy for two million dollars plus or thereabout. 
and a guy bought that tweet as an NFT. What would that guy gain from buying that tweet? The, the, what that guy will gain is that it was all over the news that the first somebody owns the first tweet that this person tweets. Somebody owns the first tweet that this person tweets. You understand? So the guy bought this thing. I'm trying, I'm, trying, I'm trying to explain to you now the risk of NFT. This guy has been holding that NFT, that tweet NFT. First tweet ever. First tweet ever that the CEO of Twitter, the founder of Twitter tweeted years back when he launched it. Somebody bought it. The guy has kept it there till this. He, he, I think he bought it last year. He has kept it there till this, till this year. Guess what happened now? When it was time, when it was time, he wanted to sell it back, and he listed it for twenty nine million dollars or thereabout. He wanted to even give some part of that money to charity to say he's going to send to you know, every, everybody that wants to do any stupid giveaway. We think of Africa first. So he wanted to, he said he's going to give some part of it to Africa, people suffering in Africa and the rest. He listed it for $29 million, something he bought for $2 million. Guess what? The only person that made him a reasonable offer made him an offer of $200. So what has happened now? Frustration has set in. Even though he bought that Twitter, that Twitter post, expensive, he bought it at a very expensive amount. People are crazy. Oh, people were crazy clapping for him that time. This guy is rich. What has happened? Frustration has set in. Why? Because right now he wants to sell that tweet and nobody is willing to even give him $1,000 for that tweet. So what is going to happen now? He is now stuck with that, that NFT. So sometimes you can buy an NFT that is very hot. Now everybody is scrambling to buy it because for NFT, people make offers. So I can see this NFT of this pen now and I will say, I'll give you 100. Another person will come, I'll give you 120. Somebody else will come and be bidding, bidding, bidding until somebody will come. Look at this pen. The person has money to waste. I'll give you $1 million for this pen. So I will sell it to that person. So when that person wants to sell it back, there should be other crazy people like that person that offered me one million. If not, other people can come there and say, I'll give you one dollar. I'll give you 50 cents. So that is what happens. So that, that is the risk associated with NFT. So I think I'm done with Facebook questions. Uh, how long can I have access to the reason use case for the nft i bought so you are nft if depends on the time the user set my friend mr easy when we were discussing about this nft in, in london he was telling me that he's going to give them rights to his royalties for 10 years so which means for 10 years if somebody is is is, is uh if somebody is streaming life is not easy by mr easy you that having you that has that NFT is the one collecting the royalty and no longer Mr. Easy. Or you are collecting a part of that NFT for the next 10 years. So they also put that too in the smart contract. And some NFTs can be for life. I think my laptop is is going off soon. So I need to off I need to um round up so I can go charge my so I can save the YouTube streaming I'm doing. I don't want to lose it. Please, I'm scared to go into this NFT because I absolutely know nothing. That is why I did this video. If you're just joining, if you're if you're just joining, watch the video. By the time I'm going to share it on my page, you're too fresh. I'll back. Thank you. How much do they sell NFTs? Where can I buy? In fact, watch this video again. Please, can you real can you do real estate in NFT world? Definitely. People are selling lands. People are selling lands as NFTs. So you can sell anything as an NFT, as far as people place value on it. In other words, one will buy NFT based on interest and ultimately passion. Yes, thank you so much, Ikenna. That is the reason you should buy an NFT. Is NFT basically for graphic or artist expert only? It is for anybody, even you right now. You can create an NFT of your face. In fact, these days, if I go on OpenSea, I get so angry. People just snap themselves. People just snap anything and list as 
and list as an NFT. There is an NFT right now that sold for, I think, over a million dollars or thereabout. It is just a rock. Somebody snapped a rock, a picture of a rock, and wrote so many things there, and someone bought it for a million dollars or so. So I think I'm done with this, people. Let me go to this page. Can an NFT be gifted, and can one make an NFT one legacy? Definitely. People, people gift people NFTs. People give people NFT. You can give someone an NFT as a gift. What if the song didn't become a hit and ROI? What happens to the investors for Perfect. So I followed an American artist that issued an NFT as a song. He issued a song as an NFT. Guess what? The song didn't pick up. Everybody that bought that NFT for that song right now is at loss. I think even Nas, even Nas NFT, people have lost. Soja Boy did an NFT that is currently a loss. So that is why I'm saying that it is based on the value that you put. So don't buy an NFT because you want to resell. Buy it because you love the person selling this NFT or because of the value you are going to get. So guys on YouTube, I might, uh, I might end the YouTube video so I can save it because I really don't want it to... Because this my laptop goes off now and my cable is far. So yeah, let me answer questions on uh, so if you have any questions on my Twitter, this is a good time to ask. So I want to thank everyone that joined this uh this live. I want to thank everyone that joined this live. I am very, very appreciative. Okay, okay, Chi, go ahead. Please, if you want to ask something. So someone wants to ask a question yeah. from my Twitter. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, yes. Um, I just joined, but I heard saying things like um, buying NFTs that only have values. But I uh, know that there are a lot of people who are flipping. Yeah. And for instance, I have been grinding. I've gotten one or two white lists, but the white list I got is kind of... I wanted to partner with somebody, but I don't have enough liquidity. Mm. So I wanted to partner with somebody. Best when check the... the the Twitter handle of the project and like they have much engagement and blah blah blah. Mm. So I was waiting for the meeting they share. Mm. But the point I'm trying to ask is that you said buy what you love and you can live for a long time. And you also give example that NAS own is now at a loss. Yeah. So what is actually what 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 what's actually the basics of it if you want to flip maybe you mint and maybe that day you see something with paper hands and they want to sell you buy on the floor, then after some minutes, if it goes up, you buy, you sell and move on. Is that not a good one? So it is a good one, but don't don't undermine the risk factor also uh, involved in this process. So I have I have I have seen an NFT where there was so much hype on the day of launch, they launched and nobody was buying. So you need to also understand that risk if you are someone that also flips nfts you need to understand the risk involved in flipping nft so you need to understand that you might you might be a collector of this nft now and there is no longer a market for it mm. you understand so this yes. can actually happen so you can you you can buy an, you can buy an nft now and the other and that excitement is high you sell it off to someone that person more excited than you and you move into another one again and you flip like that but all i just want you to understand is the risk associated with it that in case there is no other person as excited as you to buy it up from you then you are stopped with it yeah. yes 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 yeah yeah. yeah thanks so much for your contribution yeah work with steven go ahead how can someone create NFT to sell landed property? Oh, perfect, perfect, perfect. So now, first of all, now do you have the landed property already? Yes. So if you have the landed property already, where is it located? Now you need to do something like your vision, your mission, your your white. You need to do a brief explanatory document explaining what that landed property can be used for where it is located how can people have access to it if they buy it as an nft so all you need to do is put some ethereum on your metamask so to one of the popular wallets to use for nft is metamask so 
fund your metamask wallet with some ethereum once you fund it then go to OpenSea and and go to the creator site and upload and upload everything about by your nft put the price and everything and in few seconds you already created your nft then you start advertising it remember what i said people rarely go to open sea looking for random nfts what people what brings people you must build your community from social media instagram facebook twitter especially if you're someone that is really ex uh, uh, excited about nfts and you want to really benefit from it it's on twitter just even search for the hashtag nft and follow every and say that they, they should be updating you about nfts that is what i actually did so they will now be showing you people that talks about nft right now i'm interested in marketing which is my natural calling so on twitter i am following every marketing post because I tell them that I just want them that my preference is cryptocurrency or marketing. And they just show me things that are related to that. So you need to build your community and direct them to that your uh, page where you have listed your OpenSea, where you have listed your NFT on OpenSea. Then those people are the ones that will go there to buy it. Okay, I think this person is no longer talking. Okay, someone else, you have any question on my on my Twitter here? You have any question you want to ask? Requested six. Oops. Let me just approve, approve, approve. Good. Okay, so you can talk one after the other. Let's. Yeah, I've approved everyone that requested. So you have any question? Go ahead. Good evening. Yes. Good evening. It's Okay, the other person, please off your mic, off your mic. If you're not the one talking, off your mic. Yeah, go ahead. Go, yes, go ahead. Yeah, Moby, I can hear you now. When I want to mint Esna NFT, is it the same way you the landed guy? Like, yeah, it's the same. It's the same way. It's the same way. So, if you have the, if you have the art, which is, if you have the art of that NFT, it can be a picture, anything, whatever it is, uh, that a JPEG that is describing whatever it is. A drawing or anything, so you just take it to OpenSea, fund Ethereum in your in your MetaMask wallet, and then go to the creators this thing and you create it. So it's the yeah. same. It's the same process. Thank you. Yeah, but remember that you creating it doesn't mean that someone someone is going to just uh, walk around mad and come and fall on it and buy it. So you have to still go around looking for people telling the story behind that NFT. You understand? Most of the NFTs that are listed on OpenSea, in short, no second person is going to see it forever. Nobody is going to look at it. Why? Because they are not popular. There is no reason why I will go to OpenSea now and see you, you snap your chest and put and I buy it. But if there is a reason for why, why your chest is open, please, off your mind. If there's a reason for why you open your chest, you write your story on other social platforms, you can drive traffic to that your open sea page and people will buy it. Okay, the next person. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, yeah, I can hear you now. Go ahead, go ahead. We can't really hear you. I think your audio is your audio is down. Oh, oh. Can you hear me well now? Yeah, yeah, perfect, perfect. Go ahead. All right. I said first of all, I have to thank you for the music. If my mentor is you're using airports, take the airports off. I guess you're using airports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
please don't use the airports. Airports they are not really that compatible with spaces. If you want to if you want to ask any question, please indicate by raising up your hand. So we are going to let you ask your question. I've removed the airport. I've removed the airport. That's yeah, can hear you now. Go ahead. You can go ahead and speak, Mina. Okay, okay, okay. I said first of all, I have to thank Mr. Guy Stevens, the Bitcoin chief. He brought me into the space through his words on, on Instagram that year. So I'm very happy. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The questions I want to ask. I, I have, like now, I have um, some NFTs in my Binance wallet. If I want to move. So well, NF the NFT is not just going to be on OpenSea. You know, there is a wallet that you're using to connect to OpenSea. Right? No. It's uh, MetaMask. Okay, yes, 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 MetaMask. So if you want to move it to your Binance yeah. wallet, is it like your is it like the Binance.com wallet that you're asking or the or the normal Binance uh, decentralized wallet? Yeah, my Binance NFT wallet. Okay, okay, okay. So first of all, you need to check if it is compatible. But I'm not. I don't think. Uh, I don't think OpenSea is connected to to uh, uh, BSC. I don't think they have that uh, that bridge yet. So yeah. So but I don't think it must your your NFT on uh, MetaMask. I think that NFT is on. Uh, I think that. That NFT is on Ethereum network. Yes. So, yes. so I'm not sure it's compatible with uh, Binance. You know, Binance is on the BSC network, so I'm not sure it's compatible. But I, I can, please, if there's anyone that that uh, knows this thing, you can help us with this. But I'm not very sure that they have uh, breached uh, OpenSea to to Binance to Binance chain. My yeah. second question is, mm. I, I am having issue with that the word minting. I don't yes. know how to mint an NFT, and sometimes if I want to buy, I will buy high high price when others have finished the the floor price for the first price. stage. Okay, so minting actually is used for people who have who had already uh, joined like the wait list. So did you like join the wait list of that NFT and on that minting day you couldn't mint? Because for most of this project, yeah, go ahead. Sometimes they will give me that wait list or wait list, but I mm. don't know how to go about it. That's true. Sometimes I will be, I will, I will even be laughing in the mint, but I don't know how to go about it. Okay, so I'm going to connect you now with someone that that can help you put you through. Uh, just. Just search for Tatcoin News. His his real name is Arinze. He's going to help you put you through. I'm sure he is listening to this now. So he's going to show you okay. uh, most of those things. So I come to, yes. So I come again with the handle. So his I handle is search, at Tatcoin News. I think he's listening to this. Okay. Just search for Tatcoin okay, News. Tatcoin. Yeah, Tatcoin News. Okay. His name is Arinze. So he's going to help you with that uh, process understanding. Okay, yeah. okay, okay, thank you, thank so you much. very much. Yeah, so many. Yes, yes. About, about, I'm the answers. About the first question he asked about uh, Binance NFT, I mm. think Binance have NFT place where you can also trade NFTs. So I'm not sure you can transfer it up. If you have um, NFT on Misery Box, mm. there's a page on that on Binance, so you can also sell it from there. So I'm not sure you can send it anywhere. So what I think his confusion, I think his confusion is that he wants to move it from OpenSea to Binance on Marketplace. So I don't think they no, are. It's not, it's not possible. Okay, okay, possible. good, good, good. So uh, you have heard uh, that it's not possible. Okay, any other person has any question? Yes, I do. Okay, go ahead. I have a question. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Put your hand up, then we're going to give you the mic. We have lots of people requesting to speak. Um, Annika, let's hear your question. Okay, um, um, I've actually been trying to get the whole NFT store. So there are some points um, I get to be on the project, but um, maybe I wouldn't be able to mint because of the floor price. 
So what do you think maybe one could do when he has a, a, a white list or maybe the floor price is very bad? When you when you mean very very bad, is it high or low? Very low, very low. Okay. Well, I don't really I've not really experienced that, so I don't really have a direct answer for that. Yeah. But Niger Pigeon, if you have any, if if you can answer that, you can answer it. So I can't really give you an answer now because I'm careful not to say wrong things. Okay, what, what was the question again? Please repeat the question. Okay, um, I've actually been on some projects and quite unfortunately, I don't know, maybe the project is not really a good one. And then maybe they are, when, they are, um, when their minting time is closed, maybe you want some mint, but the floor price is very bad. So some, like there was one, um, the... The main thing price for you to be able to mint, you have to have at least one two, but the floor price was um, below one um, one two, and you know it's not actually encouraging for you to do that. So in in such case, what do you do? And that's why you always hear crypto traders telling you do your research. You can't really underestimate any projects you understand that's why you have to really look at who are the people backing it up what are the utility like the use cases the utility so you 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 can say oh because the price is very small i'm not going to buy and boom the minting and you you see the thing goes to 10 so 15 so so you'll be surprised so i think what you need to do is to know why they are you why they are they are, they are actually doing that project per se what what What's the utility behind it? Okay, if you have this NFT now, do you have access to meetings? Do you have access to airdrop? Do you have access to these people? You understand? So you have to really check all these things. There were some, there were some I minted, uh, all these sneak ass people. So I discovered that you can, if you have that, if you have that, you can actually, uh, you can actually do download from apps. They pay you and, and stuff like that. Is the way you link it. So you just need to know the people behind it and what it is used for. You understand? So you can. It's not because of the price. You you see, Luna that went from hundred dollar to zero point zero zero zero. You can. You, you who nobody saw that coming. So anything can happen on this way. You can buy something for as low as below one soul, and in the next couple of weeks, you you can sell it for probably ten or fifteen souls. So you just have to go and do your own research about the projects. Okay, okay so, so I believe how, how can you actually tell about a good project? Maybe good project that you can actually follow because unfortunately, I'm actually following some projects trying to you know grind to get their white list, but then you can actually get to know a good projects. Like I I I need to a, a ground that I can actually say okay, this is a very good project, so it wouldn't be like I'm wasting my time trying to. Follow the project. How many minutes? Okay, so uh, I got you. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Let me... to what Bitcoin Chief has been saying. So yeah, I'm sure he just came. Saying... He just came. Okay, he just... Yeah, so okay. please, we already answered that uh, already. So what you're going to do is listen to this space once we post it. Listen to it later, and um, and you're going to see this question. We already asked before how to spot good nfts what is what what how can you judge that this nft is going to be big in the future so i think for the benefit of uh, those on instagram and my facebook i think i'm just going to end the uh, discussion i'm going to round up the discussion on my instagram and facebook then we'll continue with this twitter space so thank you so much uh, everyone who has joined today's uh, uh, session of uh, what is NFTs? I talked about what is NFT, how to spot good NFTs, how do people make money from NFTs, and the risk associated with NFTs. So I want to thank you guys so much. Next week, we are going to discuss something entirely different. Every Sunday, 12, uh, uh, 3 p.m. Miami time, I come live here and we talk one thing about blockchain or the other so i thank you guys so much for joining like i will always say it's not just about coming to sit down and listening but it's about taking action with the information you can either you can take action in both ways you can listen to everything i have said and you said this thing is not for me i'm not interested 
So you already know it. So next time somebody else is presenting something like this to you, you already know what to say. I listen to that Bitcoin coin chief guy talk about this thing. I don't think it's for me. So it helps you not to waste your time because what you know is good to know what it's good to know something so you know if you want it or you don't want it. Then I've I've also said and I've always said that if you listen to any information that you think uh aligns with you, something that you really want to take action on, don't waste time. Gather more information about that thing and jump on it. People are making a killing from NFTs, as I'm talking to you. People are creating their own NFTs, buying other people's NFTs, and the rest of it. So I want to thank all of you. Over 2,000 persons watched this live stream on my YouTube, Instagrams. I'm streaming on Yankees NFT page. I'm streaming on Facebook, streaming on Twitter, streaming on my personal Bitcoin chief um, uh uh, page on instagram so i thank all of you who have joined and listened to us so we'll continue this discussion right now on twitter but i just want to end it on facebook and um, and instagram so thank you guys so much for joining if you want to follow me right now on on uh, on twitter it's the handle is at gaios chibweze but you will see bitcoin chief that coin trader so thank you so much guys on instagram and facebook